Wow. Little kid growing up, only child, and people say that I was spoiled, but I, I was spoiled. I was the only one who had to do the dishes and the only one who had to mow the lawn. I got all the attention, the only one who got beatings, you know? I couldn't blame it on anybody else. Mom had in my kitchen a big can opener. It was two foot long, this can opener, and it said, think big. I didn't get it for a while, but she said to me, Damon, it takes the same energy to think small as it does to think big, and you must think big. We're talking about goals. When I saw Russell Simmons driving around, I said, no matter what, I'm going to be part of that world. I can't rap, I can't sing. I could dance a little bit, but I don't think that's going to get me far. I'm going to be part of this hip-hop world. And I was making these hats. And I said, let me go home. I went home. I thought of a name. I said, I got to think of a name. Who's going to be proud and worship the customer because the customer is first. All right. I thought of the name. I put it on my shirt and I put it on my hat. And I walked out that day proud with a brand new name that was going to change the world. And the name was Bufu. <laughs> Buy us for us. I'm walking down the block. And a girl that I used to date, her brother, her gay brother came up to me and gave me the sloppiest, wettest kiss on my cheek. And said to me, Damon, I always knew that about you. And I said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> oh, boo-foo. Down south, boo-foo, me. I don't want to tell you what it meant. <laughs> but it definitely wasn't by us for us. <laughs> so I quickly went back and changed the name, as well as changed my phone number, because he kept calling me the rest of the night. And I changed the name to FUBU. All right, now it's time to monetize this situation. And how are we going to do that? We need a spokesperson. We saw that Nike had Michael Jordan. And we need a spokesperson. So the person I knew was LL. And I knew LL knew a lot of people. LL wasn't the most fashionable guy, but he also was a star. But I knew that he could hook me up with Russell Simmons and everybody else. So I go to his house. I say, L. I really need this. I need to know how to get Russell Simmons or Andre Harrell or one of these guys, to, I'll be sure, somebody to be my spokesperson. And he said, listen, I don't want to do my LL imitation, but he said, hey, baby, you know what I'm saying? What you need to do is you need to stalk him. You need to, you need to not let him breathe. You know, show up at his door every single day and, and do whatever you got to do. And no matter what, not let him out of your sights till you push your will on theirs and overcome their resistance. I said, all right, well, how do I find him? Well, I don't know. you got to go out there and find him. I can't tell you. I can't give you the addresses. So went home. I thought about it, and I said, well, why don't I just stalk LL? <laughs> so I went to his house the next day, and I set up camp on his lawn the next day, me and my friends. I, I, I took his advice, right? Now, LL comes out the house. And, um, you know, I knew that he had to leave for some show he was shooting called In the House um, in Los Angeles. I knew I had to get in a limousine. And we stood outside the house with cameras. And he said to me, you know what? If I take this shot, I probably will lose all my other endorsements, anything from Nike to everything else. He said, because nobody knows you. Nobody knows you're ever going to get anywhere. He said, but you know what? That burning desire in your eye, I believe in you. I'm going to take the shot. And if you, anything happens, you take care of me and we become you know, we'll do this together. I said, I promise I will. And I took that shot. Now, that started it all for me. Again, every single goal ignited me to another goal. Now, what did I do? I did my homework. I knew where all the stores were that bought hip hop type of apparel in the country. There was a trade show that happened in Vegas once a year, twice a year, excuse me, and it's called The Magic Show. And I sent a picture of LL in my hat to all the stores and said, we're going to be at The Magic Show. Now, I had no way to get out to The Magic Show and no money to get into The Magic Show. We wrote $300,000 worth of orders. 
in Vegas, five miles away. And they said it couldn't be done. $300,000. I'm on the plane, counting the $300,000. Wow. Then it hit me. Uh, I got to make this crap. I don't have $300,000. Oh, my God. And now if I don't make it, the stores will never believe in me again, and all the work we've done will be over. I got back to New York. I said, no problem. I'll go get a small business loan. They give those out all day. They just hand those out like, like, you know, like lollipops. Here you go. Five banks turned me down. Now, remember, my second point is H, do your homework. I did not do my homework. Ten banks turned me down. Twenty banks turned me down. I didn't even know there was more than 20 banks. But by the time I was done getting kicked in the ass out the door, it was 27 banks that turned me down. And the biggest gamble of my life had to happen at that point because I didn't have any money. So I did like somebody uneducated would do. I took a loan or a second mortgage on my home at 15% interest. And this is the most important part of being a salesperson. You are constantly selling every day. And if you think you're only selling to your friends, you're not. When you wake up in the morning and you're trying to get your son dressed, you're making a sale. Hurry up, baby, we gotta get to the da, da, da. Your husband, you're trying to fight over going to the bathroom. Oh, I gotta get there first, because this and that. You're going up to Starbucks. Hey, can I cut the line? Can I cut? You are constantly selling yourself and you are being branded. Are you in control of the brand that's being put on you? That's the question. You have to go outside your comfort zone. Everything you want in life is right outside your comfort zone. If you do it for money, you will always fail. Money is a very elusive object. Money is a great servant, but a horrible master. You must do it because you love it. Now, we have to think, what are you saying to people? They already need energy. It's the bloodline to our country, to our world. And you're saying to them, I can gain you income through energy? And you're giving it to them and they're saving money and you're making money? The hardest thing about business is finding a product, first of all, and finding a customer who needs it. There's already a product here and everybody needs it. I don't understand. R, remember that you are the brand. Remember that. You are the brand before anything else. People are investing in you and you have to be excited about what you're doing. Because if you're one of those people who, as they were saying earlier, Doug said, just put your tippy toe in something, doesn't work. You know why? Because if I'm a follower, and I see that you're putting your tippy toe in it, I don't want to talk to you six months later and go, hey, whatever happened to the uh, Ignite thing? Oh, I'm not onto that no more. I'm onto something new. I don't want to do that. Also, you can't walk up to somebody and say, hey, you know, you should get, you know, you should. Um, I'm doing this little thing. No, 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 no. That's not infectious. You're the brand. Hey, saving money. You can save money. You need to be part of this. Even if they reject you for that moment, they'll sit back and they'll watch. And they keep seeing that excitement and they start to go, they'll find excuses. Oh man, I was so busy that last time. I didn't know what to do. Oh, 